Alexis. I also go by Lex. I am the resident director for Eco Village. This will be my first year um, at Georgia Southern, and I have the wonderful opportunity to supervise my graduate assistant, Brandon, when um, I'll share a little bit of information about him. Um, but I will go ahead and begin sharing my screen. Um, All right, so you will not be able to see me. You will not be able to um, chat, but there are Q&A um, a Q &A section for you to ask questions. Um, I will get to them towards the end of the presentation. That way we can get through it. And if any questions that I have, we can always go back and look at the presentation. But to go ahead and begin, um, welcome to Eagle Village. All right, so as I said, I'm resident director for um, Eagle Village. I use she, her pronouns. Here's my contact information, just my email. And if there are any questions that I can't answer today, I will add my email to the chat. That way um, you can send it to me via email. I can get that accurate information for you. That way I'm not telling you anything that's misleading. But I have the privilege to supervise my graduate assistant, Brandon Davis. He goes by he, him pronouns. Um, he is studying higher education. He is located in Eagle Village, that's his office, um, and he will oversee seven of our RAs. All right, so just to kind of talk about the Eagle Village complex layout. So when you arrive or moving, you will receive um, a map with directions on how, uh, what directions you'll take depending on what building you're gonna be living in. Um, but for when moving is over, you have your cars, Eagle Village is allowed to park in the CJ lot and the J lot. Um, and just for where your, your elevators are located, they are located in e uh, wing one of building one and wing four of building two. And both of these are uh, on the same lot. Well, excuse me, um, facing the J lot. I'm so sorry for that. Uh, so let's talk about the Eagle Village room numbers. They are a little tricky. Um, so if you are living in building one, there is wing one and wing two. So the first number of your room is going to be what floor you're living on. And then the second number of your room is going to be the wing, um, right, the wing that you're on. Sorry, I do have my grad in my office with me. Uh, and then the last two numbers of your room would be your room number. Um, and the same thing reflects for building two, but instead of wing one and wing two, it is wing three and wing four. So once again, that first number, that is your floor that you're living on. The second number is your wing. So you will see the change of numbers based uh, depending on how far you travel down the hall. All right, um, oh, let me go back just a quick second. We do have a clubhouse. Uh, this home's, um, we have a full kitchen with a stove, an ice machine, refrigerator, uh, it has a nice seating area for if you want to study. We do have two classrooms, a computer lab. This is where our desk is located as well. Um, and we also have a little gaming area. Of course, there are restrooms available. And we also, um, on our website, you can see what kind of amenities that we have. Uh, but just to, sorry, to go back on that. All right, so we do have two living and learning, uh, living learning communities. So we have the lab and equal educators. Um, so if you are an education major and you um, accepted the, the terms to live on the hall, um, well, specifically with this group, you would be placed on the second floor of Eagle Village One. And then for the lab, same thing, if you are, I believe it's just a science major of any sorts, uh, I can get more information. Oh, it just says science and math together. Um, but if you accepted to live on the hall, you would also be placed with this group. All right, so this is a QR code that we have that will share all of the amenities of Eagle Village. I highly recommend that you take a quick picture of it and then just save it in your phone to review after the presentation as well. But we have super suites. Um, there are a couple different bedroom styles. So Eagle Village has shared and private. Um, there are more private rooms than shared rooms but you have the option of two bedroom, private rooms, three bedroom, pri private rooms, four bedroom, private rooms, but there are a few 
few shared rooms where you have two bedrooms, but you are living in the same room. So two people will be in one room and then another two people will be in another, in the other room. Um, the bed sizes are in twin XL. Um, we do have ethernet and wireless. The new wireless connection is Apogee. Um, and then there are there is a refrigerator and a microwave, but on the first floor of Eagle Village, there is a kitchen in the complex itself. Now, there's one in the clubhouse and then one in your building as well. Um, there are, I believe, five laundry rooms, two in Eagle Village, two, and then three in Eagle Village, one. Um, like it says here, we do have a clubhouse and in this clubhouse, there's a computer lab, a game room, and then there's just a number of resources within the clubhouse as well. But please scan the QR code and continue going through that information. All right, so approved items. This is approved appliances and other items. The following list contains items which are pre-approved for all residence halls. So you can have a clothing steamer, an iron, but it has to have an automatic shutoff. You can have a coffee pot, but it also has to have an automatic shut off. You could have holiday decorations, but it can only go up to two strands of light um, that may be strung together. So, um, but it must be labeled as UL approved and it will be on the label, um, but it's not allowed on porches or balconies. You can have a toaster. Um, you can have a power strip and a surge protector, um, typically one per resident or bedroom or one per living room. Uh, it also has to be labeled LL, UL approved, uh, but it's not allowed in the kitchens or bathrooms. Uh, window treatments must be labeled as fire or flame retardant. Um, window treatments, I'm assuming they mean curtains. But I can get more information on that if anyone has any questions about it. All right, so this list is pretty lengthy. Um, we do have an approved list on our website if you want to go back and review what you can or cannot bring. Um, so some approved items include an air fryer, electric griddle, a George Foreman type grill, panini press, quesadilla maker, rice cooker, slow cookers, or crock pots, a toaster oven, a waffle iron, and then there's not approved items. So major appliances such as washers, dryers, freezers, refrigerators, micro fridges, dishwashers, and air conditioners that are not already provided by the university housing are prohibited in individual rooms or units. Our plumbing, well, excuse me, our plumbing water heater and electrical systems were not designed to accommodate utility, utility demands uh, resulting from additional appliances um, that can burn our fuses. It's just, please. <laughs> Additionally, to prevent fire due to unsafe appliances or cooking practices, certain appliances are not permitted. All approved appliances must be UL certified and listed to be used in the halls as the list provided previously. Items you, without the UL certification are not permitted and will be, be the responsibility of the student to remove from their space. All right, so the not approved, um, oops, sorry. Okay, okay, so the following list item, the following list contains items that are not allowed for use in any residence hall. So alcohol, if you are not 21 and older, it is not permitted. Alcohol paraphernalia, this could include shot glasses, um, posters, it is not permitted. Bed risers are not permitted due to safety reasons. Candles and incense, charcoal and um, gas grills. We do have grills located outside of Eagle Village for your use. And when you do use them, um, we can put in a work order to have it cleaned. Deep fryers are not permitted. Drugs of any sort that are not your prescribed medication are not permitted. Um, electrical decorations like neon signs are not permitted. Electrical scooters and hoverboards. We do have lines around campus, but they're not allowed inside the hall. Um, extension cords, uh, large fabric items. This could be like a tapestry. So it cannot cover 50% of your wall. Um, or 12, and it cannot be within 12 inches of the ceiling. Um, material art equipment, oh, martial art equipment. I'm so sorry, embarrassing. Um, martial art equipment, microwave, microwaves, but that you have them in your space, you wouldn't really need another. Um, mini fridges, once again, 
not permitted. Um, pets, service, and emotional support animals are permitted if allowed by law and university of policy. Um, Plug-in fragrance warmers. So Glade plug-ins, wax warmers are not permitted. Portable heaters, uh, work lights, and LEDs. Specifically LEDs, they take um, a hard toll on our walls and that would be charged to your account due to it being a responsibility for hanging them. Uh, street signs, traffic signals, construction materials, please do not steal off campus and bring it into your space. Let's not steal at all. Um, weapons. And the final thing is wireless routers and access points. So if you bring those, that will interfere with our current wireless network apogee. And IT can even believe um, pinpoint where the room where it's coming from in your room and shut it down completely. All right. Room decoration policies. Oh, it's lengthy, y'all. Failure to keep posters or decorations at least 12 inches from the ceiling or floor covering more than 50% of any given wall with postings or decorations. Um, suspending any items from the ceiling, including, but not limited to, fishnets, parachutes, stripper poles, holiday lights, and flags. Uh, possession or displaying of any alcohol paraphernalia, including, but not limited to, funnels, beer bongs, shot dispensers, and other methods of alcohol delivery. Affixing any wall, any item to a wall, um, ceiling or floor, in a manner that can create damage to the surface. So like nails, hammering things. Um, display of any item facing outward toward public places and windows or on porches and balconies of on-campus residential facilities. So flags, posters, uh, illuminating lights, et cetera. So we do not have balconies, but you do have windows that face out. So please do not hang anything in your windows that would face out. Uh, curtains or window treatments that do not pass, uh, that do not possess a fire retardant label from the manufacturer and failure to use low tack tape, which we use a lot of blue painter tape that will definitely save you um, any damages resulting from paint chips. It can still happen, so please be very careful um, or approve low tack hanging devices. So three millimeter, three meter, meter, uh, command strip products when hanging decorations. And then affixing any item to fire uh, rated door, so decorating or posting on your apartment or unit door. Safety. Um, there are safety on call each night if emergencies arise. We do have our university police. Uh, interior hall building doors are accessed through card swipes, so each resident is programmed for their specific hall. So if you live in Eagle Village 1, you do not have access to Eagle Village 2 and vice versa. Um, exterior building units additionally have a deadbolt. So you cannot just pull it if you have to have access with your card. Um, each unit within the building has a panic button and they are silent. So if you feel like you are unsafe in a situation and you do not want to alert whoever it may be in your space, you can press the button. It does not make a sound, but it will notify university police. Um, we'll get there in two minutes. All right. So we definitely encourage all of you um, to download the Live Safe app. So if you download LiveSafe, it's free. Um, it can go from Google Play or the App Store. You register with your mobile phone number and fill out your profile and verify your account. Um, this is great if you need an escort from walking from an academic building back to your resident hall, you feel unsafe. There are reporting tips, a safety map, um, and emergency contacts. All right, so Operation Move Down. Um, so operation moving begins August 5th through the 6th on both campuses by time slots. So August 5th at the Rack, um, which is this address here, is the 2687 Atkins Boulevard. Um, and August 6th will be at your hall. So if you do not have a time slot for August 5th, you can still move in on the 6th. Um, time slots to select move in times have been released. So if you log into my, uh, my Georgia Southern, you will be able to. Um, select a time slot for move-in. There is a how-to video on selecting move-in time slots on our OMI website. O OMI means Operation Move-In. So early arrivals include our Pinellinic primary recruitment, our athletic team, marching band, and various other groups. Um, if you are part of these groups and you've already been pre-approved to begin early, your early arrival, you already know those um, specific move-in procedures and expectations.
But if you do have any questions, once again, I will put my email in the chat, okay? All right, now it is time for questions. And I do see that there are five in the Q&A. All right, so it says they can't see my screen. Can you have a water boiler for tea? Yes, as long as it does have that automatic shut off, um, which I do think a lot of them do now, but please make sure that is a feature. Um, I got a question, so no mini fridges. That is correct. You may not have a mini fridge. Um, to access your building, is it the same as your Eagle ID card? Yes, so your Eagle ID card will have your Eagle ID number on it as well. So definitely keep that on you at all times. And if you do lose it, it's okay. Make sure you report it and then go to the card services to pick up a new one. All right. Uh, you mentioned a toaster oven. Yes, you can have a toaster. Can you have fairy lights? Are fairy lights like the Christmas lights? Um, if they're like the Christmas lights, you can have two strands, but that's it. Or are they the one long one that kind of flows down? Hopefully that answered a little bit. Let me find Okay. Would I be able to, to mail boxes to my daughter? Yes. Um, so I would visit the postal services on campus. It's actually connected to our dining commons. Um, and that also has the card service as well. Can we bring up bicycles? Yes, you may, um, but they cannot go into your room. So if we see them in your space, you will have to remove it. Oh, and then for the mailing uh, question, the address is on our website as well. All right, can you bring a betta fish? Um, it doesn't have to be a brew. You just can't be more than 10 gallons. Yes, you can bring a beta fish, but it cannot be in a fish tank that is bigger than 10 gallons. Um, how does the numbering of the rooms work from the elevator? Where would 10 be? Okay, so 10 is kind of in the middle of the hallway. So when you enter in the, eleva in the elevator, you're going to you know, take your right and you're going to go down the hallway. Um, it's so let me go back to, can I move these over? All right, let's see here. Okay, so if you are going down this way, the 10 room would be in this little area right here. Yes, and right here as well. I don't know if you can see my mouse moving around, but they would be towards the middle of the building. Okay, how do you report damages that were not already reported when you move in? That is a really good question. Um, so when you are checked into your space, an email is sent to you to fill out a room condition report. That is encouraged for you to fill out before you even move anything in. That way you can see the room at what it is. Um, we do have paint chips. We get those um, fixed as soon as we can. Um, but if there's anything that you see that is an issue or you want to go ahead and begin that process of getting it fixed, um, a maintenance request. And you can do that on My, uh, my Georgia Southern. If you click on housing um, or even type in maintenance request, it can help guide you to where you need to go. You would just pick what building you're in, what your room number is, and describe in very thorough detail of what the issue is. If you just say, my microwave, doesn't work. Well, is it not counting? Is it not rotating? What do you mean by it? Um, you know what I mean? Just really give enough detail so that our facilities team can assess what's going on and then be prepared to enter your space to fix it. That's a really good question. For rope lighting, are there battery op operated fairy lights okay? Hmm. Let me, I would have to get more information on that. Um, I don't want to give you a stray answer. Let me put my email in the chat for you. Mm -hmm. 
Edu. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, if you wouldn't mind for the battery operated fairy lights question, please email me so I can get more information on that. All right, could you show the layout of the lots again in the hall? Okay, um, so I'm still on that page. If you wanna take a quick picture, I definitely encourage you to do so. Um, the CJ lot is a lot bigger in person. The image doesn't do it justice, um, but yes. So for Eagle Village, you can park in the CJ lot and the J lot. And then there's like a little bit of the CEJ, which is kind of overflow but the E is uh, only allocated for Kennedy Hall, which is right across the street from us, okay? So if you do not live in Kennedy Hall, you should not park in the only E lot. Does that make sense? Is it girls and guys in one building or separate? They are gender specific rooms, but they could live all in the same hall. And we also have gender inclusive housing this year. Will there be televisions in the living rooms? No, that is something that you would have to bring. But we do have a television, um, three of them actually in the gaming area in the clubhouse. But um, a lot of people use this for games, but you can watch TV on them too. Can we have curtain light? Curtain light, I'm not sure what you're asking there. If you wouldn't mind emailing me that so I can kind of talk more about that, okay? Uh, what is the difference between a toaster and a toaster oven? So a toaster is just where you kind of stick the bread in, it pops up the toaster oven, allows for a little bit more utility. You can cook little mini pizzas in there. Um, I think you can, I mainly see people use it for cooking pizza and defrosting, um, but a little toaster, I just think of bread, and that's all you can do, bread bagels, and it's just two little slots, or you can get one with four, and it just pops up. Toaster oven, you can stick in, little door, it does its magic. Can we use command strips? Yes. Just be careful with them. Um, they can rip paint off. So if you have blue tape, be best to use, but I'm, command strips are allowed, yeah. So no flags at all. You can have flags, they just can't be in your window. And they cannot cover more than 50% of your wall or be 12 inches from your ceiling. Are small pots allowed? Um, yes, for you to bring because we do have full kitchens in each building and in the clubhouse, but your room does not have a stove. It only has a, um, a refrigerator and a microwave. Is the one long one that falls down? Okay. Um, when do we find out the PO box numbers? That would be your. That would be on your wings account. So on the My Georgia Southern, click on your uh, My Georgia Southern portal. Click on your wings, and it should be located there in your student records. If we're ordering something off of Amazon, et cetera, that would go to your um, PO box, correct? Or would it be to the postal services? It depends on where you go to. So it'll be uh, listed on the postal and mailing website. So I'm sorry, y'all, I do have my grad. He's assisting me with some of these questions since I am new to the institution. Um, but Brandon said that it kind of depends on the carrier. We do have that information posted on our um, Postal Services website, but you can also go to Postal Services and see what the best option is depending on the, um, the carrier because I do see that in and out every day. Um, so that would be a good resource to go to. Yes, girls and boys are on the same floor, but we do have gender inclusive housing as well. Uh, how, do you, how does access to clothing washers work? There's no uh, cost to your clothes Whoa. no cost to laundry. Um, they are located, I believe there's three in Eagle Village one and two in Eagle Village two. I could be wrong on that, um, but they are on the 
they would be located like towards the ends of the building. I don't know if you can see this with my mouse going back and forth, um, but they are like towards the end of the building. But it's free. You don't not you don't have to pay for anything. All right. Can you have an air fryer? Yes. Are there individual room doors accessible? Okay, so when you walk into your space, you have that initial room door. Everyone has a key to your front door, but your individual bedroom doors have different locks on them. So with the keys, they have points, like little pinpoints of how um, that kind of match the code of the door. That's the easiest way I can explain it because that's the only way I know. Um, but your roommate who lives in C cannot get into the room of A, and that applies to everybody. Um, but you do have like your bedroom doors that can close and lock. Um, are roller skates allowed in the building? Yes, please do not use your roller skates while being in the building, but you can have them in the building. Um, just like no skateboarding on the hall, please don't roller skate on the hall. Um, who do I talk to in order to bring my, okay. Um, the Dean of Students Office, uh, specifically SARC. So I would go on, I feel like I'm gonna repeat this a lot, but the My Georgia Southern page has a lot of the information that you'll need. And it's a good place to start navigating to kind of begin searching for these, um, for like your ideas, not ideas, but the things that you need um, that go beyond housing. Is there a curfew? No, there is not a curfew. Our clubhouse does close at 10 p.m., so that's kind of the only thing that closes, um, but we do not have curfews. What building wing and floor is 1305? Okay, so the one, you're on the first floor. The three, you are on wing three, so that means you're in building two, um, and then your room number is five. So if you are 1305, you would be over here, okay? Well, it kind of stretches like to here. So the building splits like right in the middle. Should I bring my own pots and pans for the clubhouse? Yeah, I would bring them. There are a few that I saw that can be provided. Um, I believe you would have probably have to check those out with the desk. I'm not 100% sure on that. But on my grad is saying yes, yes. Um, you can bring your own pots if you need the access to cook right then and there. Um, and if someone has them checked out, then that would mean that you would have to wait. Uh, but yes, you can bring your own pots and pans. And there's kitchens in the hall as well that you can utilize with stoves. Uh, can we loft our beds? That is lofting as in with the little, the, the, only, the highest setting your bed can go is as tall as the, like the plank or the stilt. You can't loft it any higher than what it already is. Um, if your bed, for whatever reason, is on the lowest setting that it can go, you would need to put in a maintenance request to have them come and um, put it on the highest setting. You cannot loft your bed, so you cannot make them any taller than what they already are. Okay, I hope I made sense in that one. Um, to the, with a water boiler. Keurigs. Yes. Yes, you can bring a Keurig. You have to buy parking passes for Eagle Village. Yes. Um, uh, public safety? Um, no, go on the My Georgia Southern portal, and then within that, there's going to be a parking portal they can buy it there. The My Georgia Southern portal has a parking portal that you can buy your pass there. Another question of, is there a curfew? No, no curfews. So no type of lead strips at all. Oh, LED, no, please do not. Um, I, that is gonna save you a pretty penny, I promise. I know they're cool. I even wanted them at one point in my life, but they cause so much damage. And yeah, and that is one of the easiest ways to go through the conduct process. Can we have our beds raised by maintenance? Yes. Yeah, that is a work order that you would place through the My Georgia Southern uh, portal. Um, it's super easy. You put your building, room number, 
exactly what you need. So be very specific, okay? Um, they need to be UL certified for the appliances. So if I have a room number, 1417, this means I'll be in wing four, yes. Building two, yes. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, the wireless connection is called Apogee. So when you move in, you should receive instructions on how to uh, register your device, log into your network. Um, it just make sure that you are not bringing any other like wireless devices, not another router, nothing that can interfere with our wireless network because then that would make it slower. And then that kind of just leads to issues of lagging. Um, it will be, um, I know orientation is the one that will be, that receives these videos. So that may be something for them to send out. I don't know if I can send that out. Uh, can you please run through the process of move-in? Okay, yes. So there will be, um, they're called, we call them blue bins. They're just a large, deep blue bin for you to move in your belongings. Um, we will have a sign-out system in place so that one, we, I don't know how many we will have, but, um, Right. Um, so we're going to have it to where you're, we'll need your license to sign it out because you'll need your card to get onto the hallway um, or into the building. But um, the move-in process, from what I understand, is that you will check in, receive your key, and pick up um, a few things before coming to Eagle Village. So at the rack is where you'll check in, you'll receive your key, um, once you're checked in, like I said, you'll receive that email with the room condition report of when you move in, please go through before you um, start unpacking, kind of assess the walls, the floors, the bathroom, the kitchenette, um, everything. And then that way, at the end of the year, if you state that there was already a damage there upon moving, that can assist with um, our process of like damage billing. We can talk more about that uh, throughout the year if you have any questions about it. Um, but the move-in carts initially will be first come first serve. Uh, they'll still sign them out, but whoever gets there first, whoever signs them out first, I would probably allow, like allocate maybe 20 to 30 minutes with the cart. And then I would have one of my team members come and find it um, just so we can kind of help the process of everyone moving in as smoothly as possible. Um, can we use command strips to hang things? Yes. Are PCs allowed? Yes. Um, are bread makers allowed? I don't know. Um, could you email me that so I can get more information on it, please? Um, I put my email in the chat for everybody. Um, is there laundry on the first floor? It, no, it is on the second floor up. There's four floors in Eagle Village. Um, when, if any, are... Okay, so we do have, um, so there's Labor Day weekend, that is a nice little holiday, uh, there's a short break, but it's a Monday off, then you have Thanksgiving, when you're off from the 21st through the 26th, um, and then Christmas, I do not know the exact dates, but if you look at our academic calendar, you can see when there are not classes to kind of help prepare yourself for those breaks. What are the rules for having people over in your dorm overnight? I would, um, okay, that's a really good question. Um, I'm gonna refer you to our community living guide. It is on My Georgia Southern. If you just type in housing, community living guide is a whole little booklet that you can even download um, and save with you. And it has that policy in it. I don't know um, because this is my first year and you know with COVID how those policies have changed and altered to ensure everyone's safety. So I'm definitely gonna refer you to the um, to the My Georgia Southern Community Guide. All right. Um, a shower curtain is needed, yes. Um, there 
are some showers that kind of have like a little, a little step in, um, but you would definitely need a shower curtain and a liner. Can't see my email. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to stop sharing and see if that helps. Can everyone see my email? If there's any way to let me know. The washer and dryers are not in the room on the hallway. Uh, the Postal Service's website is also found on My Georgia Southern. So in the search bar, if you just type in Postal Services, it'll give you the directory, um, their main page information, how to contact them. Um, it'll talk about their um, the PO box setup, probably. Um, but, huh? The mailing address. Um, all right. So when slash where do you get your room key? So you will receive your key um, from the rack when you check in. So at the rack center, when you go, you're gonna provide your information. They're gonna um, check you in via star res. Um, star is on our side, my George Southern on your side. Um, and there is where you'll receive your key. Once you receive your key, you'll be told slash provided a map on how to get to Eagle Village. Um, so if you're living in Eagle Village 1, you'll take one route. If you live in Eagle Village 2, you take another route. Um, but that specific information will be told to you at the rack. Um, no, you may not place ring cameras outside the door or in the main door. That will definitely lead to a charge because you're having to drill things into the wall. Um, Can you break this down for me for the room? Can you please? Oh, okay, you provided the room number. So with that, you will be on the second floor, wing one, so 21, 24. Second floor, wing one, so you're in building one, room 24. Yes, um, they do stay in their assigned rooms. Um, if for whatever reason they move out, then that would be the only time that they are not in that assigned room. PCs are allowed, yes. Okay, so if you and your roommate decide to switch rooms, will there be a problem? Yes, it would be a problem with you getting a specific key because you were assigned to that room. That is a huge process on our side um, to change that. So please, please um, reduce the room switching if it's not um, completed by our administrative team. So if you are um, signed up, assigned to room A and you're moving into room D, you will not receive the key to um, room D. You will receive the key to room A. If you switch things around, um, that makes it a little confusing on our side. If damages are assessed in one room, your name is placed on that room. It's just a lot. Yeah. I love that my grad is here. Um, Brandon said that it's also a policy violation, so you would go through the conduct process for that. There is a room change process that um, it should be it should be open not now, but um, in a few weeks, in a few weeks um, after classes start. The room process, the room change process, would open. Um, but don't just switch rooms because you want to live in D and someone's living in A. Kind of avoid that if you can. You should. Um, all right. If your guests stay the night, would they need a parking pass? And would they need a parking pass if they're staying during the day? Um, there is public parking specifically at the union that guests could park in. There are some parking spots that um, they have signs on them. So there are staff and faculty signs, resident director signs, 30 minute parking signs. Um, I don't know if they would actually need a pass though. That would be a good, um, question to email me so I could get more information on that, or you can contact 
um, university police and see what they would require for that as well. <clears throat> you cannot bring a box spring to put under your mattress. Which building is 4403? So that would be building two, fourth floor, wing four. Um, it's kind of hard to describe. Um, so the bed is on like two, to me it looks like ladders, but I'm just gonna call them stilts. There are little notches going along the side of the ladder slash stilts for the bed. At the highest, it goes up to, I'm 5'3", and it kind of goes up to my rib cage. Um, maybe even like, no, rib cage. I would say rib cage. I'm 5'3", up to my rib cage. Um, that's the highest it can go. But you can put your dresser and your, like, even desk underneath it. So it is a lot of space underneath. You can store. Yes, you can have curtains on your windows. I suggest using suspension rods. That way you're not damaging the walls. Um, do parking passes claim which lot you have to park in or it can be either or? Um, parking passes that, um, do they label where you can park or is it just either or? Um, it's either or, so it's um, C, so, J, it's either or. It would be either or, either CJ or J lot. Able to attach headboards to the beds. Could you please email me that? That way I can get you a little bit more information because I do not know about headboards. Um, What does a 20 minute duration period mean? Okay, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you have 20 minutes to move all of your belongings into your room. You are allocated a 20 minute window to get from the rack, um, to get to your appointment time, which is from the rack to your building, unload a good chunk of stuff in your car. We will have crew members um, who can assist with you, uh, assist taking things, your belongings out of your vehicle bringing up to your room and I'll bring your room. Just kidding, taking it out of your car and putting it in the blue bins. Um, and that way your vehicle can move along, park, and then filter through that way. Um, but that we're not trying to rush you to move everything in in 20 minutes. That's just the time where you can pick up your key and make it to your building to begin that process. Um, if you finish in 20 minutes, Praise to you, but we're not expecting you to. Um, uh, well, it's still showing that they can't see my email. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the slide. I'm gonna share my screen again to go back to the slide that has my email. All right, can everyone see my email now? I'm so sorry if you weren't able to see it in the chat. All right, so I'm now on the slide where you can see my email. So for holiday breaks, you do have the ability to stay in your space. Um, we do have RAs on call, uh, resident directors on call. So there are people around campus who will be here. Um, if any emergency arises, of course, we have university police to assist with anything as well, but it's, we aren't forcing you to move out of your space. You can stay here if you do not have um, the ability to go home. Let's move in time. Okay, so your, um, your move in time, 7.30. At 7.30, you should be at the rack to pick up your key, your uh, map to move in, and begin your route to Eagle Village. Does that make sense? Um, they do have, uh, our bathrooms have shower rods, so all you would need is a curtain and hooks. Oh, the chat says disabled. 
that makes a lot of sense of why you couldn't see my email. But now I'm on the slide where you can't see my email. So I'm very sorry about that, y'all. Uh, yes, it uses detergent. Um, it can use pods. So with the pods, you have to put them in the machine, not for the little um, dispensary for the liquid. Okay. And there is no cost for the washer or dryer. Just make sure you're very attentive to your clothes because there is a time limit. Um, there's only four washers and four dryers per laundry room. You could bring your own shower caddy. We do not provide shower caddies. Um, I think the dimensions of the showers vary per rooms. So I don't have that directly on me. Um, but do they have dimensions on the website? Yeah. Okay, so I don't have the dimensions of the showers. They do vary by room, as I said earlier, but on the website, you can do a little virtual tour that can kind of show you what they do look like if you kind of get a gauge of um, I don't know, the depth of them. But it, it kind of varies per, um, per bedroom. So I stopped sharing my screen for a while. Now I'm back on to sharing my screen so you can see my email. Or there was a whole presentation. No, you cannot bring an electric stove. You can bring a griddle, um, a George Foreman, Panini Press. Um, if you go onto the My Georgia Southern website for specifically OMI, um, operation move in. There is a list again, the same thing that was in the presentation that I have reflects what is on the website. So I would base what you bring on that. Yes. Um, in the parking lots, there are bike racks. There are, um, there are a few right on the corner of the building. So when you enter the parking lot specifically, in the CJ, um, you kind of go towards the back and they're all right there. And then for Eagle Village too, it's right on, um, like right once again in the parking lot, but kind of off to the side of the building. But they're there, there's plenty. What building would I live in if I was in two, two? Okay, so you would be in building one, second floor, second wing. I do not encourage and I do not um, suggest you switch keys with your roommates. Once again, that is a policy violation. That is an easy way to get um, introduced to the conduct process. The list of what to bring and what not to bring is on the um, My Georgia Southern Operation Move-In site. It's a whole list. You're gonna have to do some searching. Um, if you go to what to bring, it'll bring you to another tab within the site. So by the wing, um, if you are in Eagle Village one and your room number is 1205, the first number is gonna be your floor. The second number is gonna be your wing. So you have 1105 and you have 1205. So 1205 would be on wing two and 1105 would be on wing one. Does that make sense? And if you're confused, I just learned it as of like two days ago. Um, so just full transparency, it is a little confusing, um, but we are here to support you in any way, shape, or form. If you have questions of how to navigate the numbering system, I'm here for you. Um, and luckily for us, my grad, uh, Brandon will be printing out maps for the community and putting them up before a move in. So that will be a big help on that too. All right, so me and my roommate together and they split us up and I'm sharing. I... 
Yeah. But the other one. Yeah. So when the room swap period opens, so you would have to, you would be with this roommate who I did, who did agree to, sh to change rooms with you. Um, during the room swap period is when you can do that. But as of right now, please do not try to switch keys and switch rooms um, because that does not match what you are assigned to. Um, and if you want to send me another, like an email and we can discuss that further. Um, and I can even get you in contact with our assignments team to even kind of go through the room swap process. Um, but until then, until that process is open, please do not switch your keys. Once again, that is a conduct violate, um, a conduct meeting waiting to happen because you are violating a policy. We just kind of need to know at least first before that process opens, who is in our building. Um, your, if you're in your assigned room, um, and that way, once we, because we have this thing called occupancy verification where we have to figure out if you have moved in, um, if you're planning to still live in housing, once we share that information, if anything happens to where you're not in your assigned room and we don't see you, that could affect your financial aid in some aspects. It's a whole lot. So if you want to talk to me more about the room swap process, please give me an email. I am sharing my screen with my email attached to it. Um, but I would love to continue that just to kind of get some more information if you need more information on it. Okay. Yes, please send me a, a picture of the lights to my email. I don't mind that. That way I can see if that's a, okay to do um, for you to bring. Yes, I do not mind at all for you to send me pictures. If you were scheduled on Friday to go to the rec first, but if you're scheduled for Saturday, you go straight to your hall first. Okay, so do you have a move-in appointment on Friday to go to the rec to pick up your key, or did you schedule another appointment? Do you have two appointments? Would you mind clarifying that for me? All right. Are carpets clean upon arrival? Yes. If you feel as if, um, once again, when you do move in and you get checked in, there's the room condition, um, that room, is it a move-in inventory? It's called a, a room move-in inventory. So this is where you can give everything that's going on with your space. If there's a stain on the floor, um, if there's a paint chip, mark it, and then, um, through the year, if you feel like it's affecting um, your space, if you want it to be fixed, putting in a maintenance request and having that process begin. But yes, they are cleaned upon arrival. Can you show the slides again? All right. I will hold on just a quick. So this recording will be placed on the orientation site um, for you to go back through it if you missed majority of the slides. How do you get your Eagle ID? And how do you have it checked before? Oh, how do you have it before check-in? Do they receive their Eagle ID during SOAR or is that something that they... If they didn't get it SOAR, they'll have to get it at some point during when they get there, but they'll, their Eagle ID number and their card is Okay, so you will receive your Eagle ID card if you attended SOAR. If you did not attend SOAR, then you would have to go to the card uh, services to have it print, uh, printed. Okay, so do you have any best practices or please don't do this for move-in day? Maybe top three. Okay. Um, I do have my supervisor here, my grad, and then myself, so I can give at least nine different things of um, best practices or please do not do. Um, please do not do, do not switch your keys, please. Um, once again, that leads to, that is a policy violation. That'll be a very instant conduct meeting, um, which conduct is not necessarily to be 
a scary process, but it helps with learning, learning lesson, but we don't want to make it a habit. Um, another please do not. Um, do not bring unapproved pets, please. Um, another please do not. Yes, please be patient. This is a do. Best practice is just being patient with us. Um, Move-in is a lot. Um, Eagle Village can hold up to 798 residents um, and we are almost at the capacity of that number. So it is a lot of people. I know, I understand that move-in is gonna be probably hot. We are in the South, there's gnats. Um, just being patient with us, our members, our staff, our student staff, um, and even our professional staff, whether that's custodial services, facilities. Um, if you see something that's wrong in your room and you report it, give it a little bit of time, um, but just patience is the main key. Is there anything else? Or? Hydrate. Hydrate, yes, please. The Bring your water. Um, best practices. Maybe not so much just for move in day, but for the first couple of weeks, just really allowing yourself to get involved with our student activities that have been planned for the arrival of all of our students. Um, once again, the academic calendar should have all of these events. We will be posting and communicating all of these events. It's a wonderful way to get to know people, um, especially if you are coming with friends. Get to meet more friends. If you're coming in and you're worried about making friends, it is a wonderful way to make friends. Um, I have met so many friends uh, when I was an undergrad from these welcome events who will be in my wedding one day. Um, so it is a great thing. So I definitely encourage, it's not the move in day practice, but the first couple of weeks um, after moving as well. But yes, my top three uh, please don't are do not switch your keys or switch rooms um, that are not approved. Once they are approved and you go through that swap process, that's different. But until then, please remain patient with your rooms and what uh, your assignment that you currently have. Um, if I'm going to move in on Saturday instead of Friday, do I still go to the rack? No, you would come straight to Eagle Village. Um, you're you would pick up your key at the clubhouse at the desk. Um, there may be blue bins still available. At that point, it would be, I would think that we would probably still implement a checkout system. That way we kind of know where things are. You would leave your um, driver's license because you'll need to get into your building. Um, but yes, you would only, only go to the rack on August 5th, but on August 6th, you would come to Eagle Village, the clubhouse. You would park. Um, there are sidewalks that kind of lead up to it. Um, if you live at Eagle Village One, there is a breezeway that you can walk straight from the parking lot to the clubhouse. If you live in Eagle Village Two and you park in the J lot, um, there is a sidewalk that goes straight to it as well. Where and when do I need to get my Eagle ID? So if you attended SOAR, then you should have received your Eagle ID, but if you did not attend SOAR, that's okay. You would still need to go to the card services and have them print it for you. And their hours should be posted on their site. Is there any way I can go ahead and get that changed before I move in? Um, uh, last name Spencer, please email me so we can kind of talk further about it, okay? If you wouldn't mind. The bedrooms do have carpet. So I cannot stress enough, once again, please not bring unapproved items, um, not unapproved items, don't bring those as well, but unapproved pets. We don't need pests. All right. It's scheduled for Saturday to move in and it's my only schedule. Okay, yeah, if you're scheduled just for Saturday, then you would come to the clubhouse for Eagle Village. You wouldn't go to the rack. Where do I find my room number? You should have received a, uh, the housing portal, but don't they receive emails of welcome to? No, I don't see any there. Just kidding. It is not an email. You would go to your housing portal. Are candle warmers allowed? No. No. Nope. 
Um, my best suggestion for if you want to fragrance your room, Febreze spray. That is the best and probably only option you'll have. Do not bring incense, nothing burning, uh, no plugins. It cannot be a thing. Spray. Oh, the jello beads, they kind of have a scent, um, like in a little container, kind of liquidy with the beads that can help fragrance your room, but nothing that is, um, yeah, spray, jello beads. That's pretty much it. When uh, you would be introduced to your RAs, um, if I'm if you're doing early move in, uh, so early move in, are you moving in August first? August first. If you are moving in August first, uh, some of our RAs will be during um, will be completing training, but you will see them around in our facility. Uh, what we call complex. Uh, they'll be, you know, completing their rounds. We do have RAs on duty who will complete rounds between 8 p.m. and 12 a.m. Um, and they also have sit at the desk. So if you have any questions, there's always a resource at the desk, but also they do live on your hall. So there's an RA and there's several RAs on each floor. Um, so, but based on where you live is, uh, not where you live, but like the break, the layout of the floor, um, it's kind of, I don't know where I'm going with that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Sorry, y'all. Um, our RAs will have supervision over parts of the floor. So one of our floors has three RAs. So the middle of the hallway would be for one RA and then the two sides would be for the other two. I hope that made sense. That was a long journey to get there, but we made it. All right. For all parking lots in a point um, already, yes. Hmm? Are all parking lots in a 0.25 mile radius? I don't think so. Be there's, there's for the parking lot specifically for Eagle Village, yes, they are right there in front of our building. Parking lots around campus, though, kind of depends on where you park and where you're going. Yeah. So if you are an Eagle Village, Village resident and you have an Eagle Village pass, you can only park your car there. Um, they do have boots. They have these window shields uh, for if you don't pay your tickets because you will get ticketed. They do have cars that have little cameras on the top of them to scan your um, to scan your plates. Um, but if you don't pay those tickets, they will put those um, tools on your car until you pay them. So make sure you just leave your cars in Eagle Village. We do have patrol that um, do rounds. So our parking lots don't go unmonitored if that's something y'all are worried about, but definitely just leave your cars in Eagle Village. Um, my supervisor just mentioned the parking and transportation uh, website has a lot of good information. I attended server but didn't submit a picture for the early deadline. Um, I would go to printing services and see if they can assist you with that. Make sure you go to their site to see their hours. It may be a good time. Um, when you have a time frame before the like the eighth and ninth, if you have a time frame to go to the card services. Uh, okay, so it's okay that it's the end, you know, everything is well, um, but orientation will share this video out. Well, this recording out. Why no flags? Um, once again, we're not saying no flags, like you can't have them. They can't be alcohol or drug paraphernalia and they cannot cover 80% of your wall or be 12 inches um, below your ceiling and they cannot cover your window. So we're not saying no to flags. We're just saying that there are limitations of what you can do with your flags. Does that make sense? I'm realizing you can't see my face when I was like explaining that, but um, you can have flags. Once again, there's just limitations and requirements that go along with that. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you. I will definitely look at your email very soon, most likely tomorrow after this call.
All right. Are there any other questions before we end? All right. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, all right. Okie dokie. So if there are no other questions, um, I hope all of y'all were able to at least get my emails. So if you do have questions that do pop up, um, send them my way. I will get them to them as soon as I can. We will be conducting RA training very soon. So my email access may be a little limited, but I will get to you in a reasonable amount of time. Um, but I just wanna thank you so much for attending this webinar and asking those really good questions. Definitely once again, utilize the uh, My Georgia Southern page. It has everything under the moon of what you will need for what regarding your, um, what to bring, what not to bring. Um, parking and transportation. We do have bus routes that come out here. Um, if you do not wanna move your car because your uh, parking pass does not permit you to park in other parking lots. Um, but this is definitely a good resource for you to use and explore, especially before class starts or before you even move in, just to get, uh, become a little bit familiar with the website because we do reference you a lot to that. Um, but once again, thank you so much for taking the time today to sit, listen to me ramble, stutter over my words some, but y'all are all amazing. I really appreciate you. Um, but y'all have a wonderful evening, okay?